How's it going everybody? Thank you for watching this video and just a quick note if you guys are subscribed or if you guys haven't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe and when you do click this little bell here on my channel and get all notifications sent to you from my channel that way you guys can be updated with all of my channel updates and uploads and whatever else I do on here. Thanks for watching. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the source code. My name is Deshaun and today we're going to be going over doing some particle trails. Uh, this has been a highly requested video. I've gotten many suggestions in my suggestions tab which is going to be right over in my discord here so come on over to our discord link is in the description you can go ahead and talk with everybody you can get some minecraft coding help and you can also come over here to the suggestions tab or channel and you can make suggestions for our discord and for tutorials so go ahead and do that so all the code will be available for you guys on github so if you guys are having some troubles go over there to check it out but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be just creating a particle trail for players so any player that is on the server is going to have a particle trail that follows uh, around them or on top of them or in front of them. Um, you can really do a lot of things with this. So we're just going to do it right here on the on enable because we're going to be doing a new bucket runnable. So there's no point to make a whole separate um, method for that. So what we need to do is we just need to go ahead and say so for. And now you can do this two ways. You can do a for loop for all the bucket worlds. Or you can just do a for loop for the entity inside a bucket world, but just type in the physical name, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to say for entity entity, and we're going to say bucket dot get world, and it's going to be world dot get entities. And let's go back and get that there. Let's alt enter here so we can import that. Okay, so now what we're going to say is if entity instance of player we are going to go ahead and do something for that. And we don't need to put an else statement. So I don't know if many people know this, especially if you're new to Java. You don't need to put an else statement if there's nothing else that you wanted to do if that thing doesn't work. So if you don't put an else statement, it's just going to do nothing. So you don't have to put an, an else statement and say return. I know that I used to do that a lot when I was first starting out and then I came to realize that it doesn't matter if you put an else statement because no matter what, if 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 doesn't do anything if it doesn't do the if it's not going to do anything at all okay so now what we need to say is we need to have a new bucket runnable and let's go ahead and import implement methods there which is a uh, override public void run and then let's go ahead and do run task timer asynchronously plugin oh, well not plugin well we could still do plugin but we can go ahead and say this zero zero because we want to go every single tick and then what we want to say is now I'm going to show you guys how to do two things here. And I, I meant to do tell you this when I first did this. I'm going to show you guys how to create particle trails. And then I'm going to show you how you can color a particle trail. Um, you can only do this, I believe, right now with uh, the spell mob enum particle. And you used to be able to do it with redstone. I don't think you can do it anymore. You might be able to do it with colored dust uh, if, if that's even still an enum particle. But um, just to let you know. So we'll skip over... Uh, doing the colors for right now. So we'll just go ahead and say uh, location location equals entity dot get location. For some reason, my um, thing never imports bucket location. And I really don't know why. Um, I don't know if anyone else is having trouble with that. Leave a comment down below if you've had trouble importing a certain thing. Um, because I can never import the bucket one, but we also want to go ahead and cast this to player equals player entity, just so we can use the player values and make things, uh, make our lives a little bit easier there. Okay. So now that we have the new location, so we can actually go ahead and change this to player .get location, and we don't need that inside the run because we don't need to set that location every single time. We just need to set it. Er. Yeah, actually, we need to put it in here. So go ahead and keep that in there. Then what we need to do is if you want the particle to be above their head, which is I want to for this first one here, we're going to say location dot set y equals location dot get y plus two. And that's going to be right above his head. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our amazingly long packet playout. 
Did I spell packet right? I didn't spell play right. Packet play out world particles. And this is going to be particles. And this is a new packet play out world particles. And then what we need to do is we'll just go ahead and put that on there. We need to we need an enum particle. And let's just use uh oh what do we want to use? <clears throat> Let's use no. That seems to be a pretty popular one. And then we want to say true. And now these next three values are going to be uh, XYZ. So we're going to say dot get X location dot get Y and location dot get Z. And then the next values are going to be, <coughs> well, they can be the color values. So we will just go ahead and actually create these integers right now. So we will say float red equals zero, two, three. And we'll change this to green. And we'll change this to blue. This does use RGB. And then we will go ahead and say zero or red, green, blue. And the next thing we need is going to be basically the brightness of it. Um, so we'll just set that as zero right now. And then zero, zero. Okay, one minor mistake. We do have to cast these uh, as um, floats um, because they need to be floats here. And uh, these return doubles. There we go. Okay. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and cast it to the player. So we can go ahead and say, craft player player dot get handle dot player connection dot send packet and we're going to send particles so now if we go ahead and we export this first IntelliJ and we go over here to our server go ahead and click reload there it's building completely because we didn't have one before there and we go ahead and reload and if we join the server and okay so it is not working at the moment so let's see what's happening here our world name is world right world yeah okay so let's go ahead and reload there see if it actually shows up at all oh there it goes so you can see there is we have some particles coming out of our head now pretty neat right so I'll, uh, actually you know what I think the note blocks here can be colored as well because there's multiple colors of it so right now our, our, our RGB is set at 000 which is technically black so let's change this float here this third to last zero that's I believe the brightness I'm not quite sure but when we do it with mob spell here in a second, you'll see that it kind of changes the brightness of it. Okay, so that didn't change anything for that. So let's go ahead and set this one as uh, 255. That should be, because 000 is technically all, is black, or either white or black. I forget how the RGB scale works. Yeah, look at that. So we can actually change the color of the note blocks already so using that RGB there which is pretty pretty neat so let's go ahead and actually go online here and get an actual RGB color value and let's see what we can do with it so RGB picker Google has one right on there so you don't need to go around searching I mean, so it will come up here there we go so let's see we had what 25500 which is red okay so that should be red so let's see why it's not red so maybe this one you can't completely change the color of I would imagine that you could because of what it is and how many different color variations there are of it but let's go ahead and change this to spell mob keep this at 255 so let's see we have so if we change this to zero this should give us a completely red uh, mob spell effect yeah look at that 
So now you can use this to basically to actually create trails here. I just have this right above my head here. So if we change this, if we don't set the Y there, and we export this again. And I believe this last one here is the amount. So if we change this to, let's say 10, I believe it's the amount. Don't quote me on that. Well, I guess we're gonna find out real quick right here. Hmm, not quite sure. But as you can see now, we do have a, this little trail going up behind us of the mob spell. Um, if we didn't want to use colors, we could go ahead and use something like uh, uh, crit here. Uh, actually, not crit. I don't really like crit. So let's go ahead and use us. Let's see what else we got going on in here. Uh, let's use. Uh, let's just use the heart here. So we can go ahead and use the heart. Let's go ahead and export that. Let's reload. And you can see now I got a long, long, long trail of hearts. And let me just go ahead and uh, turn this chat off here so you can see this better. So as you can see there, I, well, I didn't have to really turn it off. I could have just f one I'm an idiot. But as you can see there, we have a nice particle trail. And it happens. You might want to do it only when they move, but I just did it on enable just to save a little bit of time there. But as you can see there, we have a nice particle trail there. Hearts you cannot change the color of. I'm almost certain of. Um, I don't know what other ones you can really change the color of. Redstone, I thought you could, um, but this one just keeps it as uh, keeps it as red. Um, so they might just change that. And I don't even know what half of these are, to be honest with you. I've never even seen these particles like ever in my life. Oh man, that is mm. okay. I definitely think we don't don't want that. <laughs> So that's the uh, why is it even in there? So let's go ahead and do spell mob ambient. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it didn't finish exporting. Whoopsies. Oh, it's like a lighter version. All right. Well, there you guys go. Now you guys have seen how to go ahead and create particle trails and how to color some of the particle trails. Like I said, not all of them are able to be colored, but some of them are. Um, and you can do that right by doing exactly what I did in this video. Um, let's get that fire going. Ooh, that's... Ooh, sweet fire. <laughs> but yeah, so if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. And thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys on Thursday for our next video. Take care.